Hello, my name's Robin Cook and today we're going to talk about soil nutrition. We all know that we need to create composts and have worm farms, but do we really understand why we need to do that? Humus in the soil is one of the most vital components of making sure that our soils are healthy and nutritious and hold on to the minerals that we put on to the gardens every week or so. We've got some soil here. And in that soil, I mean, it looks just like soil to, to most of us, but what's actually inside it are things called colloids, cations and anions. Now, these are really quite foreign terms, but they're fundamental in understanding about soil structure. In the soil, you have a thing called a colloid. Now, that can be a, soil, uh, sorry, a clay colloid or a humus colloid. You've also got minerals. You've got minerals like calcium, magnesium, we're pretty familiar with what they're called but did we know that some of them have got a positive charge to them and they're called cations and others have got a negative charge to them and they're called anions. Now the colloid is the like a car park, it's a docking station where all of these positive and negative minerals can come in and park. Now to help us understand about these important aspects of the soil and soil nutrition, we're going to have a look at this car park. And we're going to imagine that this car park is a colloid, a clay colloid, in fact. Now, a clay colloid in the soil is, uh, has an electrical charge and it has lots of negatively charged sites. Now, those negatively charged sites are much like these car spaces that have been marked out in this car park. And you can see that there, it gives lots of spaces for the cars to come in and park there. Now, let's imagine that these cars, these four-wheel drives that are here, are positively charged minerals. Now, those positively charged minerals are called cations. We know that opposites attract. So if we have a negatively charged clay colloid, we're only going to attract positively charged minerals. Things like calcium, magnesium, potassium, that type of thing. Now, if we have... Um, a, a large car park, it means that we can fit lots of these positively charged minerals in, lots of these cations in, and that's fantastic. But you know what's even better is the humus that we spoke about earlier. Again, we know we need to put humus in the soil, and this is the reason why. A humus car park, a humus colloid, has both negative and positive charges on it. So you're not just going to attract these positively charged four-wheel drives, those positively charged minerals, we're also going to attract all of the negatively charged minerals as well. Okay, so to really illustrate that importance of humus in the soil, we're going to look at the car park as a positive and a negative. Now, on this side, we've got the negatively charged sites, which means that we've got all of the car spaces for our positively charged minerals, calcium, magnesium, potassium, and so forth. On the other side here, this is like the, the positively charged sites, and that's the, the role of humus, is to provide those positively charged sites. And all of these smaller cars are your negatively charged minerals, your anions, things like boron, molybdenum, and so forth, sulfur, nitrogen. They're all really incredibly vital in the soil, but without this car space over here, those ones are just going to drive straight through and they're not going to stay. Okay, now we can see that we can fit a fair few cars in here. We can fit a fair few positive and negative anions and cations in this car space. But can you imagine what it would be like if we made this a multi-level car park? We could fit in hundreds and hundreds of minerals in this car park. And that's the great advantage of building the humus and good levels of clay in your soil. Building these multi-level car parks so that we can fit in a truckload of minerals. So we're still in our car park here, and now we're going to look at the incredible role that microbes play. Microbes come in all sorts of shapes and sizes, from bacteria, fungi, algae, protozoa, nematodes, all sorts of things. The, just some of the things that they do is to form bridges, and they form bridges between the minerals that are circulating in our soil and the roots of the plants themselves. Now, if we come back to our car park, what we've got here is this creek. Now, if you've got these minerals circling around and we're imagining that they're cars, the cars are coming up to here, obviously they can't cross the creek and get to the roots of the plants, which is on the inside of the car park. The role that some of these microbes play is to form the bridge. So if the cars are coming through here, the minerals are coming through here, they can cross over this bridge with ease and find their way 
to the, the roots of the plants. Now, once they've done that, then they can form a symbiotic relationship with the, the plants. And so the microbes feed the plants, but the plants also feed the microbes. There's really a dependency there. Both need each other. And this is why we need good microbial activity in our soils. Okay, now it might seem obvious, but another two incredibly important aspects of soil nutrition are of course water and oxygen. Now plants are made up of about 80% to 90% water. So water is more important than just as a hydrator. Because most of these soil minerals are also water soluble, they're transposed through the plant in the water. So as the plant is drawing up the water, it's also drawing up the nutrients from the minerals. Another aspect, of course, is the oxygen. Now, when you're harvesting a plant like we're just going to do here, it's better, I think. And look, there's some give and take in this. You have to adapt it to your own situation. But I think overall it's better to just take the top of the plant off like this and leave the root base behind. Now, the reason why we do this is to help increase the oxygenation of the soil that we're growing in. Now... Oxygen does several things. It uh, feeds the aerobic microbes, and we've spoken about microbes. Aerobic microbes are generally the, the better ones that we want in this area of our garden. As the root dies off, it leaves uh, air passages for the oxygen and the water to travel through. It also increases your carbon content in the soil, and, and we know that carbon is something that we really value in our soils. So there's a whole range of good reasons why we would just harvest the top of our plant and leave the roots behind. So for me, the whole reason why I garden at home is so that I can look after the nutrition of the soil in which I grow my veggies because I believe that if the nutrients aren't available in the soil, if I haven't put the minerals in the soil in the first place, haven't created that life with all of those microbes in the soil, then those nutrients aren't available in the plants that I eat. And if the nutrients aren't available in the plants that I eat, then the nutrients aren't available for me and my family. And if I can't feed my family good nutrient-dense plants, then I'm not feeding the family the very best that I can give them. And so that's why we garden at home. It really does start and finish in the soil.